Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about a line uh, that has been uttered many times by the mad scientist, Louis Simmons. And a lot of people don't understand it at first, like, okay, well, what exactly does that mean? And he said quite a few times that there's no use in getting strong at the wrong exercises. Now, at first, that makes a little bit of sense, but by that same token, people will look at that and say, but strength is strength, right? You have a guy who tells people to max out on 57 different exercises <laughs> in a year. That, you know, you can do that and use massive amounts of exercise variation. And again, talking about hitting true wonder at maxes on over 50 exercises in a year, then says there's no point in getting strong at the wrong exercises. It's, it's of no use to you. And so that might sound counterintuitive at first, but let's let's discuss really what he means there. It's not that there's no use at all. It's that if you are trying to reach an elite level of strength, if you're trying to maximize your strength potential, you have to prioritize what you're doing to some extent once you're no longer a novice lifter. Now, a novice lifter just needs to get strong as hell at multiple exercises, right? If, if you're a novice lifter and you're trying to get big and strong, you need to be maximizing your squat, bench, deadlift, probably overhead press, rows, maybe chin-ups. Um, you need to be getting strong at all these basic movement patterns. Or at least some close enough variation of them. See, I won't be dogmatic. You know what, okay, if maybe not the bench press, then the weighted dip, if you can do those effectively. If not the squat, then the box squat. If not the conventional deadlift, then the sumo deadlift. But you need to be getting real strong at these basic movement patterns. Because you're going to get bigger that way. And you're going to build a base that way. When we're out of the novice phase, priority becomes a little bit more important. And it's not that you might not get some benefit from getting stronger at some things. Okay? It's not that you might not get some benefit. It's that it may not be a good allocation of your resources. Because if you want to get strong efficiently, again, particularly when you're no longer a novice and you can't just sneeze and gain five pounds of muscle anymore, because that's basically what a, a novice, it's so easy to put muscle mass on a novice, they could literally probably go for a bike ride and gain muscle, right? They could do one set to failure on the bench press and probably gain muscle from that as long as they're not starving themselves and they're sleeping. And I'm almost exaggerating, but in a way I'm not. But as you get more advanced, you can't always do that. And what we find as far as the use of recovery resources is that if you train your weakest links the hardest, you get stronger quicker. Okay? And I've given you guys examples here. I'm doing a lot of my accessory work up above. What do you see me doing? Banded dips, closed grip bench press. Okay, should tell you something about where my weak links are. Could be some triceps and chest, but triceps definitely. What else you see me doing? Safety squat, good mornings. Safety squat bar, good mornings, right? My T spine, my upper back, my hamstrings. Pen lay rows, which are just all around useful. A pen lay row is never not useful, but notice specifically I'm do, doing them with an axle bar there. Why? Grip training. I need the, the grip work. It would be a different if I was doing them with a normal bar. Right? I wouldn't get the exact same benefits. And a lot of people might not realize that at first glance. Uh, see me doing reverse hypers which is an all-around phenomenal posterior chain movement. One of the best low back movements you could possibly do. Uh, I feel it in my glutes more than anything else, and it's a hell of a hamstring builder. Not the best hamstring builder out of what I do, but it's definitely the best glute and low back developer that I've ever experienced. These are carefully selected movements. I mean, again, these aren't arbitrary. I'm not just doing a regular good morning. I'm doing it specifically with a safety bar. Okay, there's reasons for that. 
it addresses my weak links. All right, I'm not just doing dips. I'm doing dips, dips against bands. All of these movements are very carefully selected. Goes back to what he's talking about. If you look through your body and you identify your two to three biggest weak links on your general strength, notice it doesn't have to be specifically your competition squat bench and deadlift. It could be all your variations because we want to get strong at all the variations, right? You want to be strong with a safety squat bar squat. You want to be strong off of a box squat, a low box against chains, heavy chains, against light chains, against bands. We want to be strong at all of those. So realistically, these things all bring out our weak links. All those big movement and variations, they will show you your weak links. So if you can look at those things and you can identify your biggest two to three weak links, okay, and you can put large amounts of your training focus into getting really strong with a lot of volume on movements that address those weak links, whether it's specifically a joint angle in a muscle or an entire muscle, right? Because this matters. This matters. If we can maximize our development of those weakest links, we're going to get bigger and stronger quicker because we're still going to be doing our other lifts, right? We're all going to be doing either our rep work or our dynamic work or something else on our, our variation to squat benches and deadlifts. All of us are. You train on any remotely strength oriented system, particularly anything related to Louis stuff, but most programs, okay? You're going to gain a certain amount of your, your overall size, development, and everything from those movements. So if you know what your weakest links are on them and you allocate a larger amount of your resources towards that, what's going to happen? Well, your weak links are going to grow a lot faster. And then you're going to be moving bigger weights even for your volume on those things, for your speed work, for your rep work, for all that stuff even on those lifts that you're doing off of the variations of your classic lifts, which means the whole system's going to grow. Let's say even you're doing 5x5 five five for RE and not even doing speed work. If you can increase your 5x5 five by, five by 10 pounds because you've allocated a bunch of resources to your weakest link in that lift, everything's going to get bigger. Right? Everything's going to get bigger. You're going to make more progress by putting a disproportionate amount of your effort into your weakest links. And we have to do that the more advanced we get. We have limited recovery resources. We have limited gym time. And it's harder for us to break homeostasis to make progress. It takes more and more and more work to make any progress. The amount of work versus the results you get from it becomes extremely disproportionate the longer you train. Therefore, you need to allocate those resources carefully. And if you misallocate them, what happens? Okay, yeah, you'll get a little bigger and stronger on the wrong lifts, but nothing else goes up. Right? I saw that for a while. I was messing with the hip thrusts and glute bridges, and they were helping for a while until they weren't. And then I wasn't getting stronger on anything else but the glute bridges and the hip thrusts, and those kept continuing to PR for 5 by 10s right? They helped until they didn't. And at that point, there was no use to getting stronger at the wrong exercises. I spent a lot of time getting really strong at the overhead press, didn't do anything for any of my benching, right? Allocated a lot of time and recovery resources to getting really good at overhead pressing. It didn't carry over to anything for me. Doesn't mean it won't for someone else. We all have different weak links. We all have different structures. We all have different genetics. And your weaknesses right now won't be your weaknesses in a year. So if you're getting strong, and strong could doesn't just mean you're one rep. Max getting strong could be your 5x5. Five five. It could be your 5x10. Five it could be your 5x15. Getting strong at the wrong exercises is going to lead to slower overall progress. And when you're an advanced lifter, 
where it's hard to make any progress, slower overall progress is going to be pretty damn close to no progress. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.